Estes e outros conteúdos estão disponíveis em www.beiratv.pt I make typefaces and I have a good time doing it and I make a lot of characters and I meet a lot of characters and that's what I'm really, uh, I think is really what's really interesting about making type is that you meet a lot of people. And so by making these, uh, these shapes, you know, I started out as we all did a long time ago. Now for me it's a long time ago. This is when I was a little kid. I was uh, probably seven years old, and we had to practice our handwriting over and over again. You've all done that. Uh, well, maybe not so much. The young kids don't have to uh, write. They kind of scroll. They kind of scrawl themselves. So what I see here is that um, you know I, I had some really bad spacing problems. I where we were supposed to make a circle in a in a stem. The circle has compressed into an oval, which you know in future years turns out to be just the thing that you need for italic. And, and again, really, really abysmal spacing and extreme modesty. If you read the last line, it means, and I'm the king. Eo Ray Ray. Rex, is it? Ray. Yo so Ray. Uh, this is a few years later. This is uh, where I started learning about. Wow, people who read do other things. They don't actually have to, uh, they, they don't read the stuff that I read, and there's whole different ways of encoding sounds and meaning in, in different shapes that, that other people will never ever, uh, some type, it's all a secret, it's all part of the secret. That's me and my sister. I'm chasing her, she's winning because she's come around again, we would have run around and around the house. This is when I was in, uh, in, in uh, the 60s. And I, would, I went into uh, middle school, which is like a junior high, it's before high school in, in the US. And we had art classes where we would cut uh, linoleum to make printing, to do uh, printing like potato prints, to do uh, uh, raised uh, surface printing like letterpress, but of course this is on linoleum. And my project was to take my name and turn it into uh, something, eh, you know, it's not great. Yeah. The, the aesthetics are not there. But what I did was I looked in the dictionary, saw these, this set of uh, characters that was sort of uh, different, and I put them all together. I kind of figured out, well, there's, there's a G, that's supposed to be the G, and that's supposed to be the A, that's an R, and then there's an E, and then there's an M, there's a U, and then there's an N, and then there's a thing that's supposed to say CH. Well, hey, I can, that's my name. And this is what it looks like in, Right, correct reading. Uh, and obviously what's happened is that somehow I have picked the chai and gotten the, uh, the old uh, G uh, German pronunciation of my last name, which I, we all say munch because we're American and we have no clue how to say anything else besides you know, English consonants and we just have no uh, facility for language. And so it's, it's, but it turned out that I picked the right one to say Gary Munch. That's in the backyard. Uh, that's me with a big, my other sister. We're pushing a giant snowball. And that's my little sister in the front. This is when I went to uh, school in Oregon. Uh, this is a handwritten manuscript from uh, the, the Lord of the Rings, uh, uh, a part of it co uh, called Concerning Pipeweed uh, from uh, uh, the 1979. I had gone through a lot of uh, time with uh, calligraphy, writing it out and going back so, and doing mostly display work where it was sort of ploddingly uh, uh, words, or one out, just a few words, and then I met Robin Rycraft, who was a uh, teacher of bookbinding, and one of our projects was to ornament a book. And while this is not the book that I uh, that I chose, uh, I chose a, 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 a Leaf by Niggle, uh, which is also by Tolkien. Uh, but the one of the results for my final project as a, as a Bachelor of Fine Arts was to take this text and turn it into something that mimicked, and I think I, the word mimic is correct here, it, it shows a certain rushed uh, feel to it. The paper was all wrong, and it pretty 
pretty much decided me that, well, you know, I really would like to see some other way of doing letter forms than having to write them on paper. So we also did in uh, Oregon a, uh, a letterpress uh, workshop. And uh, <clears throat> with uh, an old Chandler and Price chugga-chugga, uh, 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 it, would, it, would, it, it was called a clamshell. It, would, it could take your hand off. And so we had to be very careful. And it would go very, very slowly so that we would be able to get the paper in and pull the paper out, put the paper in. Take the paper out, put the paper in, pull the paper out, and all the way, all the time, it's going to go. It was, it was. You could power it by hand, and many of us chose to do that uh, simply because it was, it was really dangerous. And the guys in the old days, they, they did it. You know, they were really good at it. They could really feed that paper in. Very dangerous stuff. What we see here, though, is a col the, the last few lines of a colophon for a handmade book that I uh, did with uh, uh, using Cloister Old Style, and, which is the only f text face we had was Cloister Old Style, which I have a very fond memory of now because I, I used it uh, so much. This is The Land of Cocaine, which is a medieval poem that the guys who lived in this place would be very familiar with uh, the sort of feelings of, well, wouldn't it be nice to be in a place where everything was uh, wonderful and the birds fell off onto your plate and, uh, and it, you, uh, the, the, the rivers ran with, with beer. Uh, it was sort of an, uh, a utopian uh, look at the possibilities of, of uh, uh, life. Another place. What was really interesting here is, too, as a student, I was, uh, we read um, uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, and one of the things that I, in, 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 enchanted me about him was his poem, uh, uh, Xanadu. And the last line he, in his description of the poem, uh, after, he, after the poem ends, is to say this, Orion Adian also, I'll sing a, a, a better song on a, on a later day, or something like that, Jerry. I know it's, it's, no, it's not cor actually correct. So uh, there was no Greek to hand. And looking at the italic, I thought, hmm. Hmm, I know I really shouldn't. I really, because I, we had a very limited supply of, of metal. And I knew I shouldn't. I knew I shouldn't have. But I decided, well, I really need to. It's going to be OK. I'm going to the, probably the last generation that was going to use this type. So I took one, two, uh, three, four sorts and cut off the parts so that we have uh, here the, a P made into a row, an iota made from an, uh, um, an I, just chop off the, uh, I know, yeah, I know, Jerry, I would chop off the, the initial serif, yes, yes, yes. And of course, that's an eight. And yes, 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 the top bar should have a little more stuff over to the, to the, to the uh, uh, right. And then the, the piece de resistance was finding a place to make the medial sigma. And your first thought is maybe go to the G. Mm, there is not one on this page uh, where there's an ear that could imagine, you can imagine being the ear of the sigma. But no, I, I, it wasn't going to work. I tried it. It didn't work. I didn't. I tried it on with an intact sort, so the G is still intact. You'll be happy to know no Gs were damaged in the production of this volume. So instead of uh, using type, I realized I said in the entire book, I had to make one mark. And so a little piece of, a little bit of uh, uh, um, a, a, a clay probe for testing that your clay is correctly uh, uh, thick, uh, a needle-like object uh, to uh, make a small stroke on that uh, with, a, uh, with the end of that uh, uh, tool. And you can see down at the bottom that Chuck Bigelow, who, uh, and David Foster, my, my advisors on these projects, Chuck Bigelow ran the uh, letterpress uh, for several years uh, before he went on to do uh, mm, mm, bigger things. 
I moved back to, uh, this, that was in Oregon, I moved back to Connecticut, and here I took up, I thought, well, maybe I'll go back to the pen and started getting a little bit of a clientele together and doing these sort of, as I said, this is, this is a classic chancery, and it's probably very small, um, that uh, it's a little bit, the, the letter, uh, the letting is a little bit tight. Yeah, so I was kind of, remember the first one, the lines were space okay, but the letters were too tight. Here the lines are too tight. And it's sort of this earnest, oh, really nice, the beautiful thing that just, uh, you know, it's like, oh, well, and I, 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 I like it, but it's just too beautiful. So I tried some other things. This is, this is actually where I teach now, and it's also where I uh, learned to uh, program. And this is from, this is a, from a 2C, 2C or not 2C, it's Shakespeare. Um, uh, a, a, from a little piece of software called uh, Fontworks. And you could make, you could take little bitmaps and little dots and you could place them onto a, 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 a matrix and generate a font and you could use it on screen. And these were some of the things that I did uh, with that. Little, little, little itty to bitty tiny half squares because this was designed for, uh, instead of 40 columns across, you had 80 columns across. Wow, it was really amazing. And then I got a Mac and made this. This is from, uh, from uh, 1997, the Ergo, um, which is a, a classic, now probably classic uh, uh, humanist sans. Everyone has humanist sans. We, the humanist sans were the big thing in the 90s and the 2000s, and they're still really big. There, there is something about them that works really well, that uh, uh, the asymmetry that they have and that sort of marks them for being not uh, uh, an O, the, that angle in, on the inside of the N and the, and the A and the Q, there, you know it's not an O, you know it's not uh, anything. It, there's something about the way the shapes of the humanist uh, works. I made it in Fontographer, and it's uh, in, uh, uh, with this sort of calligraphic feel for the italic, the, the chancery. I can't get away from the beautiful. I like the beautiful. I like beautiful things. And part of that it comes from uh, being attracted to beautiful things. And so we have uh, uh, generous uh, italic nicks, uh, sort of, uh, most of the drawings of the time that had the humanist and uh, obliques were a little bit small on the nicks, and that's one of the characteristics of the Oregon style of doing, uh, writing in italic, uh, is to have a very large nick and, and to, to make it very sharp out, uh, sharp bend out of the uh, stem. This is another part of the ergo. Oh, the, uh, this, the, the poster there was from uh, the uh, uh, type of media in uh, 1997. That's me and that's uh, Otmar Hofer. And I met him at Take Type, uh, at Typo Media, and he sort of was a guide to reproducing the uh, fonts as uh, two specifications for uh, linotype. There's a slight modulation in the in the designs where the the uh, arcade comes up and out and it's slightly thin and then it gets a little thick uh, comes thin from the stem and thick uh, as it goes back down and round. Um, there's a slight oblique axis. It's very subtle. It's not really noticeable, but that oblique axis is something that again comes from the pen. So all of that time hacking away at calligraphy was put to use in this to sort of give me a, a chance to uh, see what it would look like in type. This is another one from uh, uh, that same uh, uh, time, uh, and the finer liner, and it's really hard to read. I know, I know, I know, it's a challenging uh, readability. Uh, that's um, uh, Akira Kobayashi in the middle, uh, Veronica Elsner, and uh, Maxime uh, Zhukov in the middle as well. Uh, it's sort of a, a take on what would happen if I wrote with a, um, um, 
a felt tip pen with a very fine line and made it really, really dense because you can't really write like that, but you can do that in type. You can make it very, con uh, very condensed. It works okay in large sizes, but obviously in small sizes. It's not a text face. It's nowhere near a text face. And then I made this, which is the really. Um, and it's a, it's got that sort of, those sort of strong serifs. It's got a slightly oblique axis, which is unique for Scotch uh, classified um, uh, typeface. And I think it's a really useful thing to give a little thickness to the baseline so that the, the horizontal retains its, its, uh, uh, its uh, um, solidity. And a little bit of flexion on the horizontal cur uh, the horizontal serif, so that uh, instead of uh, plodding along flat-footed, that sort of springs along. And it works very well on paper, not always as well. But, you know, obviously, on screen, you're going to lose some of that that detail. And this is it in. Uh, 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 in text, in irregular, the bold, and uh, the medium. And in the background, Otmar, who we saw, we met earlier, Otmar Hofer, uh, he, he keeps donkeys, the Esel and Mueller. Uh, he loves his donkeys. He's like, he goes on these trips. And he came and visited uh, in Connecticut, and we went up and saw another uh, a farm that had, had uh, mules, and, and, uh, and it was really fun. So, uh, and it's a, so a moderate contrast, multiple weights, and it sort of was kind of sturdy, I think. And then they asked me to go back and look at some things with the really number two, which was revised more recently in 2008. And I had drawn some uh, um, Greek and, Ro and uh, Cyrillic, and we decided that maybe we could uh, do something to expand the, fa the, the range of, of their type, because they were starting to, they were thinking that maybe we need to have uh, character sets that are going to be much larger than what are is usually available available, the time of the ASCII character set plus, or the, w w uh, the uh, Western character set, or the Eastern European character set, is over. We don't, no one does it anymore. But it does mean that you have to do several other different, several of those other scripts. In addition to doing, in the third, uh, the middle row, uh, the accents for all the other uh, characters that use the Latin script. Uh, Kira Kobay actually did a lot of crit on that too, but oh, and this is the this is the end result of that uh, project, uh, the the really PE uh, pan European, and the character set is pretty much the uh, range uh, for um, uh, Western European, Eastern European, and Greek, and it actually this version has the Polytonic, uh, Cyrillic, and. Uh, and uh, there's a little bit of Hebrew down there, too, and some ornaments. And, and, and you know, it's all very uh, much about, ooh, I want to add some more. I want to finish it and then get it done. And it's, uh, I, OCD is sort of a thing that we have, and you know, you've maybe heard of it. It's a psychological disorder where it's, it's an obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, but as is an obsessive completion disorder, just well, I want to do, well, let me just sort of add a little bit because I think somebody might want to have a character that is really obscure, but you might want to have it sometime, so maybe I'll just put everything off and do that character. This is the first version of the Ergo Cyrillic. This is, again, back in 1997, and we can see that there's some problems here. Well, I can see that there's some problems here. Adam can see that there's some problems here. The B is really bizarre. The V is really, really wrong. The D doesn't have enough descender. The J, which is uh, the most beautiful character in the world. Remember, I like beautiful things. The J is that, uh, that uh, uh, what is it, the, the second to the last of uh, the first row. Is uh, it, it's perfectly symmetrical. It you think uh, it has that, that those arms that reach out and those legs that that are are are, are just uh, uh, straddling the world. It's just this wonderful thing that it looks like a flower. It sort of reminds me of the of the fleur de lis, a lovely little a lovely lily flower. But there's too many problems, and it was never published. And, and part of the project with the really number two was to repair, or the ergo uh, two was to uh, repair them. Oh, and that's Carol Waller. This is uh, in, that's James Montalbano on the right, on the left, uh, Nick Sherman, Bruno Steinert, and Eileen uh, Stritzer on the right. And I think that's Leslie Kerbarga or Dave Ferry, but he's a little blurry. I take terrible pictures. 
that's Dave Ferry, that's uh, Jim Parkinson, and that's Dennis Pasternak. And these are the characters that we hang out, that who hang out. We go to this thing called TypeCon, and this reminds me of the first years of TypeCon. Small group, they did, you know, a little bit, little bit of a mix, a little bit of a, of a, t of people who have similar interests, who have a passion for type. And, you know, I meet all these people who are major skill sets in, in type and typography. Dave Ferry works in, in, in uh, London, or, and uh, Jim Parkinson in uh, California, and Dennis in uh, Massachusetts. So here this relic is uh, getting a little bit of a work over, uh, and it's, you know, it's still busted. The jet has that sort of exaggerated uh, pinched uh, waist, and the K is maybe a little bit better. The F, the double uh, circle, is better. It doesn't do that sort of double looping thing, uh, but then still the uh, che and the tse and the she and the she are just wrong. Wrong. So, how do you make it right? You go find somebody who knows what he's doing. And this is Maxime on the, uh, on the left, and then above, uh, Chris Blozo. And Maxime lives in New York, and so he, he was available to do uh, workshops. And you know, by tinkering and by talking with Maxime, it was possible to get it to, to the point where he would accept it. And if he, uh, and he was still at the time the uh, the uh, typographic director uh, to the New York to uh, the U United Nations. Uh, if he does it, if he thinks it's okay, I, it probably is. I have no problem. If he thinks it's right, I'm I'm fine. So what happens here is that the if you uh, the second row from the bottom, uh, we start with tse, uh, che, she, xie, and the uh, soft and uh, ooh sounds. So the first few are how this they, they sort of collapse in their widths. So where before uh, they're all the same width. All those openings are, this, are, are similar. Here they're even, oops, they're even narrower, and they sort of cult, they go from the tse, which is wide, to the che, which is a little bit narrower, to the she, which is uh, even narrower. And it works strangely. You don't need those large openings uh, to see that it is a she. And the je, it has that, that uh, uh, more, actually more, of a uh, fleur-de-lis uh, iris uh, shape. And this is the early Greek, Greek, which, of course, uh, Jerry helped uh, with. Uh, this is from 2009, and this is from, the picture is from a workshop that Jerry did in, uh, in New York as well, at the Type Directors Club. Uh, and I, 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 it's, it was really great to get some idea. You can see that the, de the delta has a full uh, bar at the top. It's not as nice as some of my later work, but it's, it's passable. Or maybe the theta might have liked to have been uh, a loop uh, uh, to uh, accord with the, the phi, which is the, uh, we have a set of alternate characters with one, two, three, uh, veta, uh, uh, phi, and uh, theta, and the, the other phi is up at the top. So the standard phi is up at the t in the second row uh, from the top, from the bottom, uh, next to the chai, or chai or chai, it looks like chai, but it isn't. Anyway, this is also from, this is a picture of Adam who's in the, over there. From 2009, the Linotype Ergo was released in, as, in a W1 uh, 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 set of uh, uh, characters, and Otmar Hofer uh, was sort of a, one of the advisors, Bernard uh, uh, Hofmarker, and Adam Tordak, who is like the, the world's master of uh, diacritics for uh, Eastern European uh, characters, and especially his favorite, uh, my favorite, the Okanek on the E, uh, which actually has sort of a relationship in phonetics with what I hear you, many of you say, you have these sort of endings that are very soft, uh, nasal, almost an N vowel, it's sort of the same sort of uh, effect, very soft, uh, the uh, tilde A. Here, the ergo and its character set, and uh, uh, do you want, would you like to see it? That's, uh, well, that's Otmar, uh, Dennis, and John uh, uh, Downer, of course. Uh, and it's, uh, again, the, most, the uh, obsessive completion disorder. 
Here's Candera, which I did with Microsoft. It's got this sort of incised uh, feeling. It's what, it, it, the, the brief was just the strangest thing. It was it, the brief was to oh, it was to make a casual-looking design that has these uh, curved sides because we really want to show off the curved sides. And you know, well, all we can think about is really well, you know, like a casual thing like Optima, and so. Uh, uh, you know, let's match Optima. Uh, yeah, I mean, and Herman, of course, has been as a calligrapher was always a major uh, uh, role model, and uh, to have to imitate Optima was a really intimidating. So he went a completely different direction. Well, not completely di different uh, with the uh, design of Candera. You can see that it has the it does have the the curves on the uh, um, stems to show off the way. Clear type can give you a, uh, a modulation of the curve on the side, uh, and uh, it has a, again that uh, that uh, um, pro the uh, an oblique for the weight to give the, a more sturdier uh, horizontal, which is always a nice thing when you're rasterizing. If you're rasterizing, having a thick, a desirable thick, is a good thing. And then the, the uh, horizontals of the arcades are very, very flat, so that when they come out from the stem, it makes it much easier to uh, render it, rather than having to fill in a, uh, open a space in uh, the space of the nick between the stem and the bowl. So very flat curves on the exits. And this is uh, um, uh, the, the text setting. Uh, John Hudson was the, the coordinator for all of this, this project to, to gather everyone together to do the clear typefaces you have with Office or with Microsoft operating systems. Uh, that's Lawrence Penny on the uh, Penny Press uh, vendor cook. That's Lawrence. I don't know who the other one is, I'm afraid. This is Maxim, and we're looking at uh, the uh, clear type again and making a uh, Cyrillic that works with the Candera. And if the Candera has this sort of oblique, uh, this uh, uh, antasis that uh, makes these curves on the stems, well, there should be curves someplace else uh, on the on the body of the letters. So the Je has this sort of graceful uh, curve. Oh, we went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, show him a Je. He said, no, 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 Je, show him a no. No, 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 The de was even worse. Back and forth, back and forth about how do we're going to deal with the the de. He insisted that this is this that this form is the way that this works the best with uh, this uh, particular design. And I, I I'm I'm accustomed to it now. I, I'm not sure I would do it the same way if I've had a, a felt a little more sure of myself. I probably would have done uh, something different. This is about back in 2003. And the, uh, what I like about it is that many, uh, it has an architectural feeling. There's many, there are a lot of verticals they make for a space that's very structured. And it has this sort of a, a steady flow. And yet it has an asymmetry that's built into the architecture so that there is a feeling of, of these stems that march over to the left as they face backwards. So uh, the, those especially in here, the je. Uh, that was Maxime, of course. And here's uh, the Greek for Candera, and that's Jerry, and me sitting, and Lucas de Groot. Uh, me, I used to have more hair, and Jerry, well, you know, had more. We all had more hair there. Uh, it was a decade ago. And here, uh, this interesting thing that Jerry was came up with, was, or presented, was that the alpha, which is typically sort of drawn as a mathematical symbol if you're dealing with, with uh, Greek, I mean, very, not very many people uh, experience Greek as a text, but rather as a, a source of uh, uh, bits from uh, which to build a, a, an equation if they get into that, into, if they're doing math. Uh, that it might be, it, it is perfectly fine to make it one one story without the, the sort of fish-shaped uh, uh, loop that so many alphas have. 
And then, of course, there's the, de the delta again with that uh, that uh, good strong uh, elbow that zags to the to the to the uh, to the right, doesn't it? And uh, some of the alternate forms for the uh, beta, uh, theta, and phi. Uh, the normal phi is the is the looped one for text, and the phi is the mathematical symbol. So. Kandera. And this is, this, this is the set for Kandera. This is the Greek and Latin and Cyrillic. Uh, there is a, uh, uh, a micro, um, the clear type also included, included uh, Japanese for, uh, which Matthew Carter worked on when I, I'm afraid I, I don't, it's in the, my notes, the, the name of the guy who did the Japanese. Anyway, so anyway, I finished that and then, just hit knocking around. I was working at a school at uh, in Br at Bridgeport and uh, just you know having a nice time getting settled into an academic life. But you kind of feel that there's always something you can do more. And one of the things that I was doing at the same time was, was uh, with the type director's club. And this is actually me outside on their fire escape where the was in in New York. You can't smoke inside as you as you know. Uh, it's, Pretty much worldwide, you're, it's restricted. Um, and I picked up uh, again. To, so I, I, thought, I figured I needed to do something interesting. So I said uh, myself, you know, I don't. This is something that I don't have to do. It's not my bread and butter. My bread and butter is teaching. And in order to keep myself alert, I make type. And then the thing is. Uh, I started out saying, oh, I'm just going to do the American character set, and that'll be it, and I'll be happy, and I'll be fine, and I'll release it. And of course, that didn't happen. What this is, is a neo-grotesque, sort of a combination of the uh, humanist uh, uh, impulse of the 90s with the grotesque uh, of the uh, 50s, and the idea of combining them to uh, do something uh, different and interesting. Uh, it's, it's it's, bit, it's around. It's not like this is not totally unique. And what I like about it, though, is that it's sort of it's sort of it's very normal. It's very industrious, and it's got a slight na naivete to it. So there's, so there's a lot of naive things going on in this thing, and they're not really apparent. But that's what I like. You know, these naive things are going on, and you don't really notice that they're naive, and they're sort of not really what you what uh, you might really do if you were actually doing a real proper serious type that just was, you know, just has to be so serious. Uh, so there's a little bit of uh, levity in it too. And so I have been working on this since 2006, teaching and at the uh, 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 Type Directors Club going back and forth with, with uh, the competitions. This is me and uh, Chris Holmes. She designed, if you have a Mac, you read her stuff all the, every day. Uh, she did Lucida Grand. And so, but this is my near grotesque on the screen uh, with the uh, Greek, uh, uh, I know, Jerry, I know, I know. It's a, it's a little A-like thing. It's a little fishy thing, but I, I think it's narrow enough that it, it fits and it's not going to disturb the pattern of the, uh, it make too many holes in the, in the text. So I'm, I'm happy with it. So um, this is massively obsessive completion disorder. So there's, there's Greek, there's, Ro there's Latin, there's uh, Cyrillic, and Armenian that I'm not really finished with. And then here, uh, Cherokee, and Arabic, and of course Hebrew. It is, wow. Yeah. I knew that they were there. I knew that those those forms were there, but I've always been intimidated by Arabic, and the, uh, went to uh, workshops. And anyway, but uh, this is the way. And then, oh, you know, you have to have weights. You have to have you have to have widths. And so this thing has just grown to be bigger and bigger and bigger, where it's just this massively, massively obsessive completion disorder. Let's one more weight, one more uh, character here. The weights. Set where from thin to light, regular, medium, uh, semi, uh, demi, semi, uh, bold, extra bold, bold, and ultra. That's Paul Shaw, uh, Lawrence Penny, back at uh, uh, um, Rich Kegler, and uh, Stoof uh, in the in the seat inside the D. 
Uh, and so these, these weights and these uh, all for the normal widths, not for the, the thin, for the uh, compressed and uh, condensed. It's ridiculous. And this is the so this is the set for uh, for um, this particular uh, set, uh, this particular set of fonts. I don't. It's not really a font anymore. It's a, it's like a, this growth that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's like it's like a, um, uh, this moss, uh, like a like a like a bread that's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And again, it's slightly newer, slightly naive, and especially it turns out in the Arabic. That's Robert uh, uh, de Victor Kumtek, uh, that's uh, Mike Stale, and that's Matteo Bologna. This is Arabic. <laughs> okay, you know, if you speak Arabic, if you write Arabic, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm, don't, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to make this possible. I'm trying to make it work, and it's still in progress. Uh, but I think it's, it's come some way. So at the top is the first version uh, with, uh, or in the, the first text block, uh, the first edition, first version that I showed anyone. Uh, and it was called gangly, awkward, sort of like a, a late 18 year old. I said, whoa, yes, that's what I want. Slightly naive, slightly stumbly, slightly off kilter, slightly, you know, just a little bit. Someone who has potential, but it's not real. Not, it's, it's potential energy, not actual kinetic energy. Something that, something that isn't exactly uh, perfect and elegant and beautiful. Something that's not any of those things, but has some, some, some uh, other kinds of strength. The bottom is the, is the forms that I'm using now. Um, they're less round. They are more asymmetrical, which matches, in a way, the, uh, uh, the uh, Roman. And I've just been tinkering enough with it to, I think, you know, make, make something that can actually work. Uh, and I, the, the, the little bit of help I've had with this was from Nadine Shaheen from Linotype, uh, who did workshops again in uh, New York and the Type Drivers Club. It says Al, 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 Al Arabia at the top. And one, uh, the weights, a couple of the weights, uh, that's Chris Holmes. and. Chuck Bigelow and Chris Holmes in uh, olden days. Uh, so the, the um, problem with Arabic, of course, as you know, is that, well, it's not really a problem. The feature of Arabic is that it's, it's written by hand and it has these sort of uh, lines that curl and, and stretch and, and go up and down, loop around, and it all seems to be linked together, but of course it isn't. And so the, the need to, it needs to stop for a, f a small set of characters, the, the uh, O, the, mm, the R, the Z, uh, few, just a few of them, and you need to somehow deal with the changes in the, sh in the shapes that that, re that uh, brings. Um, and each, each letter has, each character has, each letter has a different glyph depending on its place in the, uh, uh, in the, in the text. And this is the weight so far, plus the uh, tracing, which was, came, to, it came, it came to me that you can show the sequence of the pen, the movement of the pen, in a way that you can't really do in Roman. It, says it doesn't work in the Roman, in the Latin. It, it's continuous. It's generally continuous. And you can show that by uh, showing the sides and the overlapping of the uh, uh, stroke as it goes off to the right. So the, the most recent part of the stroke is in front. Now this is what I think, this is probably the more, most more interesting thing. Uh, the picture in the back, can you see that? You, see the, you can see that it's a, a guy, somebody? It's, it's Ross Mills. It's a picture of Ross. He was rolling up on me. <clears throat> he, he, we were in uh, New Orleans, which is the, um, at, if you know, you know where New Orleans is, it's on the Gulf Coast. It was in the news frequently a few years ago. And we were at TypeCon, and this it was taken on a, he just rolled, he just likes to roll up on you and just kind of uh, take your space. So I just snapped this from him. We have sort of this uh, uh, frenemy thing going on, I guess. 
this is Cherokee. Uh, at the top is an engineering drawing by Joseph and, and Roy, Joseph Herb and uh, Roy Borney, uh, from the education services out in Taliqua in Oklahoma. And under that is, and that's why Ross is, this is why Ross's picture is there, underneath is uh, Plantagenet Cherokee. And this is a d design by, by Ross, and I'm sure he'd have something to say about mine. I haven't actually heard anything from him, but, but uh, and it's really nice. And the thing about Cherokee is that it's a small language, it's a real minority language. It's, it's a, a language that's written, spoken and written by a group of people who have been beat up and moved around and pushed aside and really marginalized and are they they have a culture that they'd like to to keep and they have no way of doing that in the modern times except for Ross Mills's uh, Plantagenet Cherokee. And as much as we like it, and as much as they like it, as much as they appreciate the fact that it's even on the iPad and on their phones, they want something else. And so they're challenged to the community of type, the characters who make up the community of type in the US, was make us some, some Cherokee. We want some Cherokee. They be there was like they were begging for more. And I'm a sucker for that sort of thing. I, I really am. You make, you make a challenge and I'll, I'll, tr I'll try it. And I, I think I did. I mean, it's not perhaps the best Cherokee ever, but I think it's rather interesting. Cherokee is a syllabary. It uses a set of characters that are a combination of a, of a consonant and a vowel. So you have a, a, e, o, u, and u, mm, which is the same, you know, hey, does that sound kind of familiar? It's the same kind of uh, nasalized uh, uh, vowel. It's actually a schwa vowel uh, that, uh, with, a, with a nasalizing uh, effect on the end. And uh, they have a very limited number of consonants, although they can voice and devoice and palatalize. So g, k, h, l, m, n, qu, sa. And the one single character that has no uh, consonant attached is s, uh, d, and ta, and tl, and tla. You can see the Cherokee syllabary was devised by this man who is rather famous. His name is Sequoia. Yeah, just like the, like the trees. And it, his uh, English name was George Guest or Gist. And you can see that there's a lot about it that is sort of verging on the edge of familiar. You all read Latin script, I read Latin script, and George Sequoia did not read the Latin script. He did not read it all. He was working from scratch to make a, uh, to devise a way of writing for his people um, down in Georgia. They were moved on the Trail of Tears to Oklahoma. It was sort of a genocide. So we have a D shape, there's an R shape, there's a T shape. I know, I know, I look at these things and I, I wanna make it sound like, I wanna make the sound, uh, when I see the D shape, I wanna say ah. Uh, I would like to say, think that I'm gonna say ah, uh, and that uh, with the R shape, I'm gonna say eh, and with the T shape, I'm gonna say e, but it's not gonna work. I'm, I'm, I'm really too, uh, it's, it's, it's too much like. Uh, but for the new young children who are learning uh, Cherokee for the first time, the fact that the A has a similar shape, or, and, and all typefaces that uh, are in Cherokee have identical sorts, rather like there are identical sorts in um, uh, Cyrillic, the A, and you notice when I showed you the Cyrillic, there were some characters missing. There was the, the A, the O, the E, the Y, and uh, a couple others. Uh, of a, mm. Well, anyway, those are, they're, they're identical in, in shape. And it, sh we, it sort of shares across, uh, across the uh, 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 script. And uh, uh, it's, it's rather uh, uh, strange because similar sounds have n totally dissimilar uh, shapes. Uh, and it, there is no real seeming organization to the addition of a stroke and a taking away a stroke. Is it going to be a loop? So you have something like this. You would expect that this character, which is uh, qui, would have something to do with this character, which is not much. 
shift a little bit, maybe. It's got a loop. That's about it. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's not me. I, I, I do not get to edit. I do not get to edit these shapes. I have to deal with these shapes. And how do you deal with these shapes that uh, they think are the top part? Uh, and uh, these little zigzags on the top and uh, off the G shape and off the, off the C shape. And it sure does look like a P, but it's really a, a This is how it looks in, in, in typesetting. In, in a text, it's Cherokee. I don't read it. I, can, I can't translate it for you. Uh, but again, it's, a, it's sort of plain speaking. And the background is Bourbon Street at night. Bourbon Street is like the, it is like, uh, I don't know what you would compare it to, but it's probably not fit for, for mixed company to describe it. It's a big party place, a huge party place. There are people drinking up and down this, this, this five block uh, area. And it's just really crazy. It's, 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 and it does to where the Mardi Gras occurs, and it's the biggest party in, the, in America. So we were there in the middle of July, which is like the hardest time of the year, but there's still people walking up and down all day, all night, walking up and down, uh, drinking and having a party all the time, 24-7. I don't think I could live there. This is a, an oblique. There are no obliques. There are all, everything has always been just one set, one weight, one set. That's it. Here, uh, they have the option of, do, of using a, an oblique for, uh, for setting. And here, I think where I, the, something that's rather innovative for Cherokee, it seems so obvious now, but after I set, uh, finish the Cherokee characters, you can see that they are cap height. And I realize, wow, they, uh, oops, <laughs> they shouldn't be. So these are the Cherokee with a, with a height that's equal to a small cap. And, and the, the effect then is that each line is separated much more clearly. Uh, each uh, character can stand on its own much more clearly. Uh, the words will stand out. The collection of uh, syllables will stand out much more clearly. So small caps for, for uh, Cherokee. And it also sets more evenly with the Latin. You notice that there's a Latin line down at the bottom, two Latin, two Latin lines at the bottom. Uh, and it's sort of the, the, the color is much more even. Nobody knows out there in the world of, of uh, the normal world, the non-typographic world, how to set, use small caps. It's really a shame. One thing I also did was to make sure that there was enough space between the words, because one of the things they love to do when they're typing, they have these clusters of sounds, they would put a double space between, so that the, it's, not, it's a word space, but it has to be, it's a, it's a big word space, and it allows the word to stand out more clearly. So there's a double word space, and the open type substitution automatically takes two, uh, word, two spaces that are next to Cherokee characters and replaces it with a double space, but a single space, a Cherokee space. These are the weights, again, thin, uh, light, regular, all the way down to ultra. And it's like the revenge of multiple, of massively multiple OCD. Ah, well, you know, okay, this is, oh, this is, uh, this is from the, the stern wheeler uh, paddling up and down the uh, uh, river at, in New Orleans. This is a, um, uh, another uh, f design that I've, I've been working on for years. It was released a long time ago, and I can't remember who did it uh, and who I did it, release it with, but I don't think they're in business anymore, so I guess it's not really out there. Uh, and it, it sort of a, a w suggests some ways to write Cherokee. This is a very fine chancery based in the Latin. You can see the Latin down at the bottom and a, an edge pen uh, way of writing Cherokee. When the children are presented with these model scripts, they have these fine finishes to them. There's no way you're going to go back in and break apart those serifs. They start to think the serifs are the most important things. And yes, the serifs are important. You have to have a serif. You need to have a serif on the top of this character. Uh, but you don't need to have it on the top of this character. 
And by, by placing, uh, by, use, by actually writing these forms, I think it, make, it gives a clue as to where the way you might write the letters rather than just typing, because people need to make letters without type. Can you imagine that? No computer to make a note? You know, it's really amazing. So, you know, everyone wants something pretty. And, well, I think that this is pretty and pretty, and this is sort of the, the stock and masculine, I don't want to say that, but it's sort of the, the business-like, the industrial. This is sort of the other side of, of the possibilities of what you can do, could be done with, with Cherokee. This is, my late, this is my latest. This is this summer. Uh, Daniel called me and I said, oh, I'll, I'll do it. And I took my time and I, 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 to come here. And when, instead of learning Portuguese, I thought I'd make some type. So I did. I made some type. And I went back to an old uh, of a design uh, that was proposed as part of the Microsoft uh, project and finished it, finished it up, went, corrected some errors in the uh, arcades and the, and the shapes of the, of the uh, uh, bowls and the, uh, the setting of the curves on the stems. Remember, we had to have curves like Optima. And did the, a, a, an italic, built an, an italic. And it's slightly right, slightly rustic. There's something sort of unfinished, sort of out in the, it, it's out in the woods. This is out, out my back window. It's a deer. Uh, and it's out, it's sort of not as refined as Optima and not re, as refined as uh, Candera either, but it just has something nice to it. This is a, setting of the lowercase uh, and the Roman. And you can see a lot of the evidence of the pen as it goes around the curve, as, it, as, it, as the edges change places inside to out, outside to in, going around the P and the Q, that there's still that, that really strong uh, shift of the weight, the stress of the weight, but it's very gentle and slow and follows the curve very, very much like the natural pen stroke. This is the italic. Lots of I love the italic. I, you know, I guess I'm still back in Oregon in some ways. And this is the small caps. Oh, yeah, I know. So here's the, here comes the obsessive compulsive again. And so I got to have small caps. You got to have small caps. Everything has to have small caps. Which the neo grotesque also has small caps. Uh, and here again, a, adjusting the capital shapes to uh, the things that you that, that to a size that's uh, I always do slightly larger than the uh, x height because it just work, works better. And because if you ever add Cyrillic, you got to have your small caps bigger than the X height, otherwise it will look just the same. And this is a little innovative, and the same font, uh, a switch in the Romans to Punchel. So you have the sort of soft, rounded forms that are uh, more, just sort of round and roly-poly, sort of uh, pudgy little, uh, little hobbit-like things that bounce along like bunny rabbits. I really like the D. It took a long time figuring out how that's supposed to work. Uh, this is the character set here. So, okay, that, and then, ah, I had, I, you know, then I realized when I came here, the name is wrong. <laughs> and I was spelling, I mean, the name was right, but I was spelling it wrong. So I think I'm gonna, I will call it Jardin. And these, when I went out, did you go to the museum out back? in back of the uh, coffee place that we were at, there are these uh, sorts of uh, ligatures that of, of, sort, of uh, letters that are come together in order to save space on some of the less skillfully uh, drawn tombstones. The, 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 the writer crams them together. And so, you know, I, I always was interested in that sort of thing, sort of that saving a space. And again, it kind of fit the sort of rustic, uh, out in the countryside, uh, effect and so I, I don't know why and that I, I did this like two months ago that's a lady slipper it's an orchid that grows wild in the US it's very very beautiful very rare and this is something else that's new uh, techne 
in the in the back is actually some of my, my students work uh, drawing we, we go through a process we're just uh, three weeks into the process of producing typefaces uh, he's do decided on a rather ch a rather challenging uh, project where he's going to make these sort of uh, blocks of, of uh, uh, checkerboards and, and it's going to feel like they're sort of exploding uh, it's going to be it's coming out really nicely uh, so this is Techni, and it has a really super simple set. set. I am not going to do a Cyrillic, and I'm not going to do an Italic, and I'm not going to do a Greek. Well, maybe I'll do a Greek. Maybe I'll do a Cherokee. I should do a Cherokee. That's right. So that's what I need to do. There are no, 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 no small caps, no small caps. But there's like six weights, so what do you want, right? There's enough color there that you can choose that you can make a, uh, you have a palette there that uh, works. This is, and this is another thing going way back, reviving this particular project. This is the Womo, did you say douche? Douche? For two, for the second? Well, I can't say it because obviously I don't speak a word of Portuguese. Uh, as many of you have noticed, I have no clue. Um, I am often clueless. Uh, and so what, what this does is puts a scriptorium in a font. You can do a, a rotunda. It's like they're going to put scribes out of business all over the place. They're going to be falling like flies. You can, you can do this, uh, this uh, black letter rotunda and uh, you have, there's a set of uh, capitals that are the sort of the normal decorated things that you expect them to be decorated and there's a set of lombardics and then there's a set of very plain capitals because inevitably and maybe I don't know if you have this over here inevitably someone wants a tattoo and they use this, the fully decorated capitals all together so it's fully decorated capitals T-A-T-O, tattoo, or T-A-T-T-O-O, -O, tattoo, all in decorated caps, and it's unreadable. Maybe that's the point, but if they ever set this, if they ever set this, the contextual alternates will kick in and uh, just take, change all of the uh, uh, fancy capitals to the plane so you can actually read the words. And you can see that that effect uh, under Kua uh, the first line of Kua Uskwe, it's all in those, uh, the, uh, uh, you can actually read the word Kua Uskwe. And then I went to a workshop at TypeCon at the end of the, month, end of, uh, the summer, and I, saw, I met Kalapi uh, Gajar, who actually works for uh, Dalton Mag, who, uh, is going, and, and uh, uh, Bruno is going to be speaking tomorrow, and he introduced us to Gujarati, one of the index scripts. And he kind of got us going on this and gave us all, each a character to work on. And I did this fat and this thin. And I was like, oh wow, this is going to be really great. It's really easy. It's just got this kind of replacement thing that has to happen. And then he, then he, then he hits you, yeah, well, with the thing, this thing called run. If anyone ever says this to you, run, run fast. Conjuncts. Oh no. Oh no, these are like specialized ligatures that ah, do these strange things that they jump around and they, they link together but they change their shapes and it's just, and there are 5,000 possible Ah. So anyway, anyway, I, I'm thinking, you know, if I have another lifetime, maybe I will do this. Maybe I will try. Maybe I'll try. I kind of like the one at the top because it's like really, really bold and it's not really, uh, it's not uh, beautiful. It's sort of bold and, and sort of forceful, which I'm not really in that. So anyway, that's what I've been doing, uh, and I'm, I'll take some questions, but this, I wanted to show you some very special people for me. These are my mom, that's my mom, and that's my dad. They're waving, hi, hi. And then I'd like, just like to say thanks, and muito obrigado. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd love to talk about type anytime. Type, 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 type.